So we're logged here into PFSense. We're assuming that you already have PFSense installed and configured. Uh, I do have another video guide on how to do that. So feel free to have a look at that if you wanna know how to do this. And we're gonna go and look at Squid and Squid Guard to be able to control, uh, essentially setting up a proxy uh, within PFSense to allow you know to control traffic. So within your PFSense login, you wanna go into System and Package Manager. And under Available Packages, you're gonna look for two programs, Squid, S-Q-U-I-D, and Squid Guard. S-Q-U-I-D, G-A-U-R-D. So Squid and Squid Guard. So go ahead and put those in here. Um, they're not gonna show up in my list because I already have them installed, but you'll see that you can easily look at a whole bunch of packages that are available to install into PFSense. Once you've installed Squid Guard and Squid, you click on, you know, obviously, once you've selected them, sorry, you click on install, and then it'll go and install that package nice and easy. And you'll see that under my installed packages. Once that loads, you'll see that I've got a few packages in here, including Squid and Squid Guard. All right, it gives you a little bit of a description here of what, um, what each of those two systems are. So Squid is essentially your proxy, and your Squid Guard is your proxy URL filter. Now, once that is installed, you will now see them under services. So under the services tab, you click on that and you'll see a few different options. You've got a squid proxy server, a squid reverse proxy and a squid guard proxy filter. So the squid proxy and reverse proxy will come part of the squid package and then the squid guard proxy will be, uh, you know, come as part of your squid guard installation. So once you've got Squid Guard and uh, Squid installed, there's some cool things that you can do from these two features. So from within our standard PFSense login, under the services tab, you'll, you'll have, as we, sh as we saw before, Squid Proxy, Squid Reverse, and Squid Guard. If we go into Squid Proxy, you've got a few different options in here. There's a lot of stuff that you can cover, a lot of things that you can actually do. We're not gonna cover it um, in great detail. But um, you can obviously things you know do things like changing the ports. You can do remote caches, local caches. You can uh, configure bits of antivirus, squid antivirus checks, um, ACLs, which is essentially your access control list. So you can control in here, uh, add things like your whitelist, restricted IPs, uh, all those sort of things directly from the um, from the proxy server itself. You can do a blacklist uh, so that when all your traffic flows via your firewall, it'll hit that. You can do traffic management. This is actually quite a cool feature. We can control uh, you know, maximum and minimum download sizes, upload sizes. So you can actually really control the amount of traffic and throughput uh, and bandwidth that goes through your proxy server. Uh, things like authentication, if you want authentication for your proxy server, you know, if you want to be prompted with uh, AD credentials, uh, LDAP credentials, for example, or you want to set up some local proxy server um, details in there users, real time, what's going on on your proxy server, and then you can just sync it as well. Uh, from our uh, Squid Guard, uh, you've got in here, obviously your services that show you that it's running, uh, you know, certain options around blacklist, if you wanna redirect things to a blacklist. Uh, you've got common ACL, so common access control list. So within here, you've got a whole bunch of rules that you can apply. So once you've gone and you've created what's called target categories, which we'll look at in a second, you can then go and add them into this list and allow and deny particular groups of websites and URLs and uh, IP addresses directly from here. You can also import, uh, which is a really good, good feature. You can actually import, so from the blacklist area, you can import blacklists essentially straight off the internet. So there's a number of repositories online uh, that let you download literally thousands, if not millions of particular websites that are known to be either spam or adult content or certain things like that, which you can import straight into here, you can download them. And then from your common ACLs, I'll show up in the list here, for example, you know, porn, you've got that deny, you've got proxies are whitelisted, spyware is deny, etc. So you can control all of that straight from there. You can do things like redirecting. So you can, you know, show error messages when people try to access a, a website that has been blocked. You can create group ACLs. You can do the target categories. So allowed and blacklist. So I can go into say something like a blacklist. I can create my own blacklist in here 
add websites in here that I want to be blacklisted. I know that I don't want to access these. Um, similarly, you can create an allowed list. We can put IPs or websites in there that you do want to allow traffic. And then from your common ACL, you've got them listed in here, your blacklist straight in here and your allowed list, which you can just literally just add straight in to whitelist or deny as you so need to. Uh, times, you've got rewrites, which we won't cover, blacklist, which we just looked at before, and then the logs, essentially you can see what's been happening and what's been sort of going through your um, your PFSense uh, squid proxy, squid guard, proxy firewalls. So once that's configured, you then need to configure obviously your, your servers, your workstations, your fleet out there to be able to, um, you know, obviously pick up your proxy because unless your web traffic is flowing through your proxy server, uh, it essentially defeats the purpose. So within Internet Explorer, you need the setting within Internet Options under Connections to set up a proxy server. All right. So this is my proxy server IP address. You can put in the host name of the proxy server. You can also create some uh, DNS uh, a records or C name records. You can call it proxy, for example, and create a record in there in your DNS under the port that is defined in your um, proxy server, which is 3128 um, by default. So that now all of my traffic will flow through my proxy server um, before it actually goes out to the internet. Um, you can do things like uh, within your DHCP scopes, you know, if you've got DHCP configured, you can actually say that I want, um, you know, my my DNS uh, and my, not my DNS, my gateway to be, you know, talking to my firewall. And you can do these things called WPADS, which essentially forces um, all of your computers to pick up those proxy settings. You can also do it via group policy as well for Windows fleets. But essentially any device on your network that needs to use your proxy, whether if it's a Windows computer, whether if it's a Mac computer, whether if it's even um, you know a smartphone such as an iPhone, you can go into your, your settings of your network and input the proxy server in there so that it actually can control what you do and don't have. So that is my quick summary. Comment below if you found this helpful and we'll talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel Digital by Computing just on the button there for more videos.